What's up guys? Welcome to another Virtus Strength Cast. Today I'm going to make this nice, short and quick and I just want to tackle squat stance, proper squat stance and squats versus deadlift. Real quick, let's just go ahead and tackle squat versus deadlift. I uh, love the deadlift. It's a lift we do in here all the time. It's definitely something I love to use to measure power, dead weight, lifting right off the ground. But it misses a really important component that the squats add to the program. Squats incorporate agility. The ability to balance weight, lower at your own ability, let your hamstrings and your glutes extend, flex them on your own, contract and explode out of that. Okay, agility is just the ability to change direction and we want to be able to do that in an explosive manner. When we deadlift guys, it's simply one plane, it's just lifting the weight off the ground. Sure, you need to lower it in control if you're doing it right, but guys, there's no actual eccentric phase of your deadlift. It's all concentric, I mean it's all just flex. Okay, in the squat, it's an eccentric phase on the way down, elongation of the muscle, balancing the weight, contract and explode out. Just like we do when we change any sort of direction on the field, court, wherever you're playing your sport. Okay, squats over deadlift, always. Don't get me wrong, deadlifts are great, but if you can do your squats over deadlift, choose that 98% of the time. There's a lot of different variations, I'll get into that in another video, I want to make this one quick. Uh, your squat stance. Guys, see so a lot of people get their legs out real wide. Why do you think they do that? Okay, for one, they might be a power lifter. Maybe that's something they're trying to do as a career or a sport. They're just trying to lift as much weight as possible. The wider your legs, guys, the less range of motion you have. So the less range of motion, the less distance you have to cover, the easier it is to lift that weight. Okay, you get your feet in closer together, that real nice two-point athletic stance where you're going to get your jump shot, where you're going to be on the line of scrimmage, okay? Where you're going to be in most sports and most activities that's where you want to practice your squat, guys. If you're just doing your traditional front or back squat. Think about just a couple things to give an example to kind of get this to relate to real life. If you're in a combine and you're just trying to do a sheer explosive exercise to prove your explosiveness, a broad jump or a vertical jump. Well, guys, if your legs are all out wide, this is where you practice your squat. This is where you gain your power. Think about if you've got to jump straight up or you've got to jump straight out. Guys, those legs eventually have to come together to get a good landing. That inertia, that momentum of your legs and that weight coming back in is actually sacrificing the weight and the inertia and momentum that should be driving straight up or straight out. Okay, so practice your squats with your heels just around shoulder width, toes slightly pointed out or slight external rotation just like you'd be when your feet plant naturally on your sprint or when you take your jump shot. Okay guys, make sure you're not buckling your knees, especially when you squat. But thanks for listening, guys. I just want to make that quick. Keep in mind, deadlifts are phenomenal, but squats incorporate agility. There's a lot of variations of squats we'll get into another day. And when we squat as an athlete and not a power lifter, we want to make sure our stance is athletic and not real wide. Okay, guys? Thanks for checking in. Throw me some questions. I'll get you some feedback. Get lit in the gym. Keep lifting. Get stronger. Peace.